This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. Bonds gaining today and stocks falling as investors perhaps expressing concerns over the ongoing crisis in Japan. Also, diverging yields between the highest, highest rated high yield bonds. Could that signal that rising oil prices are going to slow economic growth? My next guest, Marty Fritzen, global credit strategist at BNP Paribas Assets. Marty, great to be with you. Thanks so much for coming in. What does this divergence that at least we're reporting today at Bloomberg, what does this signal, if anything, because is it related to what treasuries are doing or is it more about investor appetite for high yield because that is certainly one of the most popular classes of investments that we've seen in let's say the last two three quarters yeah there's continue to be very strong interest uh, we had a huge inflow into the high yield funds last week uh, there were a couple of outflows earlier uh, uh, then a uh, $500 million inflow and then a billion dollar inflow. So uh, I think the demand for the higher yield in paper is still there. The, um, uh, the sensitivity to the underlying treasury rates differs, uh, but the, uh, and there, I think there is some uh, concern about the economic outlook. Uh, underlying uh, all of the advance we've seen has been that lingering concern. Has this all been contrived by a combination of fiscal stimulus and very easy money policy on the part of the Fed? That sounds like a nice diplomatic way of saying hocus pocus. I mean, it, it, do, you, do you believe that? Do you believe that the stimulus and whatever government action has been taken, do you think that when removed, let's say at the end of the summer, is there going to be a day of reckoning or are we going to be able to fly on our own? I think it's an open question, but there is a real risk on it. Uh, one thing you can point to is the default rate is b well below average by historical standards. And when we've seen it this low in the past, uh, some of the other economic indicators have been further along. One that we use a lot in our work is capacity utilization, which is currently at 76 percent. A new number will be announced on uh, the 15th. Uh, but in the past, when you've had default rates as low as they are, typically that number has been up at 80 percent plus, which might not seem like a big difference, except that that's kind of where it gets to the point where capacity begins getting constrained when you get up into the low 80s. So it's a significant difference. And so there is some sense that perhaps more companies should be defaulting, but because the capital markets are so forgiving and so willing to accommodate companies as a result of the Fed's policy, a lot of companies are once again able to kick the can down the road uh, a few A years. free pass almost. That's right. So is that also a reflection of the way a lot of the bond covenants uh, have been written, that it's just much more difficult to default because there's so much leniency built into the capital structure agreements that exist? Well, it uh, enters into, of course, the, you're more likely to trip a loan covenant uh, ordinarily in, just in the way they're written. And, and those, uh, we've seen more of the covenant light loans. That's uh, something that's become more common off and on over the last few years. And yes, those companies are really more because of the loan provisions may be able to skate further. Now, interestingly, in this last downturn, that did not result in worse credit experience. But that, again, may be partly because the Fed came in so quickly and so aggressively in restoring uh, the uh, the, the uh, credit availability. It could be, and Moody's for one has warned of this, that perhaps the next time around those companies, by not tripping covenants, will stay alive longer, but that means there will be less to recover when they do finally default. So the jury's still out on that one. And what are you seeing in terms of high yield issuance right now? Uh, very strong. Uh, Still a lot of demand, again, because uh, money coming in has to find a home. Uh, debt gets retired automatically. You know, the the uh, typical maturity is 10 years, so at a minimum, you'd have 10 percent of the outstandings disappearing every year. But in, ten, in fact, they tend to get refinanced more quickly than that. So it's a, a kind of a race just to keep up with what's getting retired. And of course, also a lot of refinancing of existing debt as companies take advantage of the lower rates. I want to thank you very much, Marty Fritzen, BNP Ariba, global credit strategist, thank you very much for your insights into the world of high-yield debt. Thank, thank you. you.